Hey guys, it's your girl Just a Mess with Hope and Heels. Looking like a hot mess, but feeling amazing. This week, the word that we've been using, the word that we've been studying is obey. Obey. What does that mean to you? What does obey mean, right? We hear it in many things. Obey your parents. Obey your rules at school. Obey the rules at work, right? Obey. Obey means many things to many people. In the dictionary, obedience, it's a compliance with an order, request, or a law. So, right, we got to obey the law. We got to obey the rules. You got to obey the instructions when you're putting something together. When you're making a meal, you're following a recipe, right? You obey the recipe, put every ingredient in there. Sometimes we skip the ingredient. Sometimes we don't follow the rules. We don't obey and it always comes with a consequence, right? When we don't listen or follow the rules. And the definition in the Bible, it's to hear God's word and act accordingly. Thus, biblical obedience to God means to hear, trust, submit, and surrender to God's word, right? With that, we've been studying John 8, 31, 32, and it says, to the, G to the jewels, jewels right to the jews who had believed in him jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free so what does that mean what does that mean to you to me i felt that if we know his word if we know his truth and we hold it and believe in it and obey in it nothing else can keep us a bondage right his truth will set us free it doesn't matter what the world thinks it doesn't matter what work thinks it doesn't matter what your family thinks it doesn't matter what your friends think all that matters is if you obey and trust in god's teaching and his word his truth if we submit to him nothing can hurt us nothing can harm us right when it's between when you are one with god when you are aligned with god when you and him are holding that tikva rope when he's our umbilical cord you know he is our life when you're in accordance with him and you hold on to him and you don't let go you don't let the distraction you don't let the problems get to you nothing else can get to me nothing else can get to my heart right but we live in the flesh world, you know, and there's times where things come, things happen, right? And easily we can be distracted. We can easily easily be consumed with the world, with the problems that are going on, with all these things, these tactics, people, social media trying to scare you. You know, there's so much going on around us that causes distraction and we can easily be distracted. We can easily get pulled away from being obedient, right? Like these past couple months. If anybody knows me, I don't love to work out, right? But working out helps my mind, my body, my spirit. It helps me in many ways. Whatever's going on in my household, whatever's going on in my marriage, whatever's going on in my life, my relationships with family or friends, I get to the gym, I get to that floor, and it's just me, my workout, and the strength that comes for God, from God. And nothing matters, right? But for the past two months, I wasn't obeying. I wasn't following any of my regimens for my eating habits. I wasn't working out. I didn't care for it. I was just work, chill on the couch, let myself soak up rest is needed don't get me wrong everybody needs rest days right but when those rest days turn into having just junk having just no motivation making you feel some type of way the depression feelings the negative feelings the self-pity feelings when all that comes in and that's what happened to me i was just working going to work it was like i was a robot work kids school, couch, work, kids, school, couch, right? I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't obeying the goals. I wasn't obeying the rules that I set for myself because fitness is a lifestyle. I don't have the genes where I stay tiny and thin and eat whatever I want. No, 
and these hips don't lie. Thank you to my great grandparents, you know, for all those thick jeans. Um, but yeah, if I don't obey, if I don't follow my regimen, my meal regimen, my snack regimen, if I don't follow any type of workout, I'm not obeying the goals, the plans that I set for myself. So I'm not going to see any results. You know, I'm going to see all this flabbiness. I'm going to see my tummy hang over my gut. I don't like that. It doesn't make me feel, it makes me feel depressed. It puts me in a funk. It makes me feel, ugh. And I don't like feeling like that. And I'm not saying I'm overweight or whatever. This is just between me and myself. So when I don't give myself that love, when I don't obey the rules that I set for my fitness health, everything goes out the door. Everything, the way I feel about life, about people, my household, everything just feels, ugh, right? I don't like that. I don't like that. And I was letting myself feel like that for these past two months. But I had to push and I had to tell myself and wake up, girl, get out of that couch, get away, get up and do something different, right? So this week, I'm very proud of myself. Four days, I worked out, I followed and I listened. And I, you know, social media will show you all kinds of food. I love food. I'm not a picky eater. I want to eat everything in sight. I love Doritos, tacos, pozole, birria tacos, guac. I love it all. I love it, right? Junk food, chamoy, mangonadas, you name it, right? And it's so tempting, right? Because so many people, you want to go eat? You want to get a snack? You want this? You want that? Right? And a lot of times if you, I'm like, no, no, no. And they're like, one won't hurt. You start to hear that, right? Just one, just one. So there goes just one and two and three. And you know where it ends, right? So that's what happened to me these past two months. And that's okay. You know, like I said, rest days need it, but no mas. Time to go. So when, you know, Sister Loops, my sister introduced this Bible verse and, you know, we studied over it. We chatted about it. And I was like, man. I'm not obeying. I'm not obeying the goals. I'm not obeying my fitness health. So yes, I feel like junk. I feel like crap, you know, and I was tired of feeling like that. And that's okay. And that's how we are so blessed, right? Because I prayed, set some goals. And this week I conquered their goals. And now it's all about continue to get through the weekend. And then hopefully I obey and follow my regimen and get it done right so when we speak about obey and you know knowing the truth and his teachings also right i also set a goal for me and my family that i have to obey right because we want our young ones my husband and i want our little ones to know god to know for all our children for all our children right and it's harder for our older ones because two of them don't live here with us and you know i have a 17 year old almost 18 so you know she does listen when we pray and things like that right and we can still teach her and help her grow in her spiritual walk and so now it's also time to help our little ones right so we set a goal me and my husband my husband has worked nights forever like it feels like 10 years probably that he hasn't been on a natural schedule right a normal schedule and so i one of the goals was for him and i whether it's every night or once a week to sit with our little ones, read the Bible and explain anything as best as we can because my children ask questions galore, right? And sometimes I can't even say, ask Siri, ask Google, right? Because they're questions that they need to be answered, not from the world, from the word, right? From God's truth. And so there's times too where my son will ask me things. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, let's wait. That's a dad question. Let's wait for dad to get home, right? Um, just so I don't want to ever explain things wrong to him. Like I want it to make sense because my son will question till the end, like, well, why and why and why, right? And which is good things, right? We want our children to learn. We want our children to not be scared to ask why or, you know, because sometimes even as an adult, when I hear the Bible or I read the Bible and I'm like, hmm, and it makes sense, you know, and so, like, who's going to answer those questions? Those people are not around anymore, right? So, we just pray to God for understanding. And then, you know, you can also, we also reach out to people that are able to maybe have a better understanding of it to help teach us, right? So, one of the goals was that we're going to 
you know, pick up this Bible more at night for them. We're going to help them understand it, read it together. And so if we don't obey what we said that we were going to do, we won't fill our children with the word, right? They're going to go hungry, spiritually hungry. And we're going to, years are going to pass and they're not going to know anything. We're not going to teach them anything, right? So wherever you're at in your spiritual life, in your fitness life, any type of health goals in your life, right? You have to obey the plan. You have to follow the plan. If you want to be a singer, if you want to play an instrument, right? If you want to be anything, a teacher, a doctor, right? You're going to have to obey the schooling, you're gonna to have to obey the studying, you're gonna to have to obey the work, right? You're gonna to have to put in work to get there, to reach your goals, right? So it's the same thing with God's truth. It's the same thing with his word and the Bible. If you get in there and you dig in, and if you obey the rules, the goal that you set for yourself, you're gonna see results, right? So I gave myself 12 weeks, 12 weeks to hit it hard, do my best and follow my plan. I can't say those 12 weeks are going to be perfect. I might have a slip up. I might have a moment of, I don't care. I'm going to do it. I want to do it. I want to eat it, right? That might happen. But we are so blessed that we have over and over and over. We can do things over and over. As many times as I fall off this plan, as many times as I don't care, I have the opportunity, I have the chance, I have the choice to start all over. And that's the same thing with God. We, you know, there's times where we wanna find love or there's times we want to grow in our spiritual way, right? We want a new job, we want new friends, we want new surroundings, right? Or anytime we've come to God with a prayer request, right? We're like, God, please, I need a new job. We went to an interview, God, please, or I want a new car, whatever it is. God, please heal my body. Please heal my broken heart. Please help me take away the shame. Maybe the anger, maybe this bitterness that's going on in your life, right? We want God to take that away, right? And, and there's times where we want to know why. Why is this happening, God? Why did you remove this person from my life? Why did that happen to my car? Why? There's so many times where we get angry and want to know why, God. We're not going to get the answer. I mean, we're not going to, he's not going to, you know, but we are blessed for him to give us understanding. It might not make sense at the moment when it seems like a dark season, a cloudy season, a hurtful season. We always want to jump into the next door. We always want to shut the door real quick, right? And it's in his timing. When we can hold on to his truth, when we can hold on to his promises, when we can follow and obey and be obedient to him. The blessings are bigger. The doors of opportunity are just open as many doors as he wants, right? But he'll guide us. He'll tell us which one to go in, you know? But that's up to us. God told me to walk straight to that door. Am I going to do it or am I going to say, but that one looks prettier. That one looks like it has better stuff, right? That's how we get fooled, just with the way with the world, you know? Um, so we just I'm going to go this way, God. You told me to go that way. I know, but this one looks prettier and I want to do what I want to do. That happens. That happens to us a lot. You know, it's natural. It's normal. And then when we go through the door and it's like all scary and spooky and full of ghosts and thorns or whatever, right? We're walking on it's a door full of nails to walk on. Then we're like, mm, I should have followed the rules. I should have been obedient. But our God is so loving and we are so blessed that we can run out of that door and that door that he said, go, that, that's been here for you, will still be open. Will still be there. That opportunity will still be there, right? Because that's how much he loves us. That's how much we are blessed, right? We are so blessed that we can fall off track. We can not listen to him. And I'm not saying it doesn't come with consequences, right? Because we walked through that door full of nails. So now our feet are going to be full of you know, we're going to be full of damaged feet because we stepped on all those nails that we weren't supposed to go through versus what he had there waiting for us this whole time, right? So wherever you are in your life, wherever God is telling you, wherever, whatever goals you're setting for yourself, wherever obedience is needed, 
whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your work. If, if you're wanting to leave work and God's saying, hold on a little longer, child, wait a little longer, right? Listen, listen, just, just a little bit, you know, just give him a little longer. Put that trust in him just for a little bit longer. Hold on to what he's telling you. Be obedient and you'll see. You'll see that he will not fail you, right? You might think, um, oh, I listened and it wasn't the outcome that I wanted, right? And then we're all mad again with him and bitter, right? You said, God, you said go through this door. You told me, even though it looked all ugly, you told me to go through that door and that door looked prettier. But we don't know what he's saving us from, right? There's so much distraction. There's so much noise, right? We think we can do it better. We think we know better, right? How many times following your own rules, following someone else's rules, right? Following someone else's. If I got someone else's regimen of workout or goals that were set for their meals and I follow their meals, they might have a different plan. Maybe they're trying to bulk up and here I am following their thing. And then I'm going to wonder why well, I'm gaining weight. This is not what I wanted. Everybody's different. Everybody's body's different. And it's just the way with everybody's spiritual walk. We're all different in our spiritual walk, but nothing changes. The one thing that remains the same is his love, his teaching, the Bible, the verses, nothing changes, right? His love for us, his everything is the same over and over and over. And he forgives us over and over and over, right? So whatever it is that you got going on, right? Because it's a new year, right? And people are with all about new year, new resolutions or resolutions. I don't know. I don't ever do any of that stuff because most of the time I'm not going to fall through, right? Like you set yourself up for failure. Don't do that. Take it one day at a time, right? This week I wanted to work out four times a week and I got it done. And it didn't matter if it was a 20 minute workout or an hour workout, right? I put in work, I got it done and I felt amazing. Like, yeah, my body hurts me, but my body was hurting when I wasn't working out. I was just sitting there letting my body go to crap, right? So it hurts either way. It hurts to work out and it hurts to sit on the couch all day and do nothing. So I like this hurt. This is a good hurt. This is a good feeling. And because in 12 weeks, I'm going to see change and I'm going to see a difference. And I'm not trying to be a size zero and I'm not trying to be this and that. This is for my health. This is to help me to balance my mind, my spirit, my body. Because when I'm not taking care of me and I'm not taking care of myself, I'm no good for my family. I'm no good for my children. I'm no good for myself. I'm no good for my friends. I'm no good for my family, right? I want to be good for myself so that I could be good for them because they matter. I matter, but they matter, right? They are my world. They are my people. They're my family. And I want to be good for them. And I'm not saying every day is going to be perfect. And I'm not saying there's, there's not going to be days you struggle because that's the world we live in. This is the world we live in right now. And it's a scary world. It's a crazy world. And it could be fearful and frightening, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be like that. And even if you're not going out and getting into all this junk right now, right? Because I don't care to be out and about. It's just crazy out there right now, right? And I love being with my family. And whether that's us being at home celebrating, a quick celebration, you know, whatever it is, right? I want to be good for them. I want to be good I want to be good for the people around me. And so I want to be good for my children and my family, right? And so this year, I'm, I'm setting myself up. Like, I'm like, let's do this. Let's do this. Whether it's every day that I'm good or every day that I'm able to follow something, right? I'm able to be obedient to the Lord, right? Because I got to, if I'm going to teach my children these words, what do I have to do? I have to be obedient, follow the word and teach them, right? And grow, grow as a family. So that's what I want us to do. In this year, I want us to grow. I want us to learn and just be obedient. Be obedient to him and teach the teaching to him, to my children. If I can't reach anybody outside the world, whatever, whoever, our children matter, right? Because they are the future. And this future doesn't look bright. It really doesn't. But if we can train the little ones now and teach them Jesus, and teach them the word and teach them to only believe in God's truth, to hold on to God's truth, to run to God, to dig into his word. If we could teach them those regimens over and over and over, 
That's, that's what it is for me because they will learn these teachings. They will stick to them. They will remember what was taught. They will remember the moments when we read the book to them, when we sat down and read the word and explained it to them. You know, they will remember that and they will have the tools and they will know what to do when they're going through things, when they're feeling yucky, when they're feeling sad, depressed, lonely, or when they're going through anything in life, whether it's death or a loss of a job or anything that comes their way. They will be ready. They will be ready to battle, you know, and I'm not saying, oh, they're going to be ready and that's it. Nothing can come against them. No, enemy is working every day. Enemy is working overtime and he will do his best to try to ruin this goal. He will do his best to try to take away these teachings and the truth and he will throw daggers, you know, across the way and to my children. But we just pray about it. We get back on it. We dig into the word. And, you know, even if maybe for a day, I don't feel like getting into the word. Maybe I don't feel like working out that day, you know, but I can't live like that every day. No, I can't live like that is not a way of life. People, if you live like that every day, if you allow yourself to consume the junk, the negativity and just worry and no, no, it's going to be, it's going to affect your household. It's going to affect your health. It's going to affect your mind. You know, it's going to affect your spirit. And that's what I was doing to myself. I wasn't obeying any of the things that I was taught. You know, I was just letting myself. It was okay. It started off as a break. I need a break. I work out all the time. I eat. I follow every rule. And the break turned into a lot of other things. It turned into starting to feel yucky and depressed. And I don't want to feel like that no more. So I was tired of it. Got up, changed it, rethought my thinking. And here we are. So... This week, obey. Obedience is the word, is what we've been teaching, is what we've been learning, right? And so I just wanted to get on here and give you guys a hey, you know, wherever it is you are in your life, in your fitness goal. And if you're, you know, thriving for a new job, if you're thriving, you're out there looking for a new home, a new car, whatever it is, I'm in agreement for you and I pray that you would just listen. Listen, when nothing makes sense, ask him. Help me, Lord. Help me to understand what's going on around me. Help me to understand the new job you want me, the new job that I'm seeking or the new car or the new home, wherever it is in your life that you need to be obedient for yourself and for your spirit. Challenge you obey the rules you know same thing when we're driving we got to obey that speed limit right speaking of speed limit i got a ticket see i didn't obey but in my defense i did not know windcrest has like a 10 mile per hour and i think i was going like 20 um so see i didn't obey and i got a ticket now i still haven't obeyed and didn't go to court right i didn't go to court when i was supposed to so now it turned into a warrant and you know, you know where it goes from there, right? So it's just the same with life. If we don't obey the rules at work, if we don't obey the rules at home or at school, you got a consequence to it, right? Everything has consequences, whether they're good or bad, you know, how that goes. So just be obedient, obey, get the word in. When you hold on to his truth and you're geared up with it and you know no one can Mm, no one can break that bond between you and God. Psh, nothing else matters. You've been set free when you can hold on to it and fight the enemy with the word over and over and over. And all you have to say is Jesus, Jesus. The enemy will flee. He won't be gone forever. You know, like I said, we live in a world full of enemies, full of angels. Every single day is a battle. Every single day is a struggle, right? As soon as the alarm clock comes on, if you don't obey and you kept pressing snooze, 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 what's going to happen? You're going to wake up late and it's just a mess from there, right? It's just a mess from there. So think about it. I'll read it again to you one more time. John 8, 31, 32. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold my teaching, so where are we supposed to hold the teaching, right? In our heart, in our minds, in our tongues, right? Hold the teaching with you. 
you are really his disciples and that's what we all are we're his disciples it doesn't matter what you go through it doesn't matter how much of education you have it doesn't matter how much schooling you have it doesn't matter what you did in your past it doesn't matter what you are we are his right we belong to him he wipes all that away the enemy is a liar he wants you to hold on to you're no good you're not enough you can't finish school. You don't deserve that car, that man, that woman, that house. You don't deserve none of that. Who are you? That's what the enemy tells you, right? Mm -mm. The enemy's a liar. So anytime, any day, any moment, those lies stir up in here or in here, psh, shut it out. Fight the enemy. It's not an easy battle. And some people are like, I don't know. I don't know how. No one taught me how. I don't know what to do. Can't fight him, you know, physically. He's not right there. There's so many tools, so many tools to fight in the spirit, right? But we have to obey. We have to read it. We have to follow it. We have to do what he tells us to do. Sometimes you got to stand up and just say, you know what, enemy? Flee. Flee from my mind. Flee from my home. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Simple as that. Why don't you try it and let me know how that works for you, right? Some days I'm mad. Some days I don't want to. Some days I get in a cranky attitude, a cranky mood. And I'm, mm, I don't care, right? And I want to fight with everybody in my house. And I want to talk a certain type of way. And my husband will be like, oh, no. That's all enemy right there. He's like, when you're ready not to have the enemy with you, I'll talk to you then. I'm like, and then he leaves right now. I'm like, ew, I am stuck with the enemy's junk, right? And then I start to feel like, no, I already know what that feels like. I don't want to feel like that. And I don't want people you know, calling me out or my husband saying, you're the enemy's right there on you. I don't want to talk to you. That's an ugly feeling, right? So don't get distracted. Whatever your goals are for a month, two months, the whole year, whatever goals you have set physically, mentally, spiritually, obey, be obedient to yourself, be obedient to God, wherever he's calling you in your life, wherever the area in your world that he wants you to obey and be obedient, give it a try. Don't trust me, right? Because who am I? I'm just just the mess, full of a beautiful mess, right? Um, so yeah, why don't you give it a try? See what he has. Have a conversation with him. Sit down and drink some tea, even some wine with him, right? He knows. He knows your heart. He knows the area. He already has things set out for you. He already has a plan for you, right? It's just about, are you going to obey his plan? Or are you going to try to take your own direction? Are you going to follow your own rules, your own regimen? So don't be mad when you don't see results. Oh, I'm not losing weight. Oh, I didn't get that car. I didn't get that job. Oh, that guy. Yeah, no, whatever. Oh, all those dates went bad. Don't be mad at him, right? I mean, we can, he's going to take it. He's going to, there's nothing he can't handle from us. He can handle our attitudes. He can handle our ugly mouths. He can handle our ugly spirit, right? He can handle it. No one else might, right? Because people are around you are going to be like, oh, I don't want to talk to her. Oh, I don't want to hang around her. She's always mad and grumpy and grouchy. Like, oh, right? So don't follow me. Don't follow my plan. Don't follow my regimen. His plan, wherever it is, I can guarantee you, you open up that book, you open up that word, reach out to somebody, right? I'm sure you have plenty of people around you. And if you don't, reach out to Hope and Hills. You have Just the Mess, you have J Soul, you have Debbie Deb, and you have Loops. Four of us that you can reach out to at any time, at any moment when you're feeling a certain type of way, when you're struggling, when you don't know what to do, when you're lost and you feel alone, reach out to somebody. Get into the word and obey, right? Obey. And you see, it'll all work out for you. So this week, obey, open up John 8, 31, 32, and let it speak to you and see where it goes from there. It's been nice chatting with you. I stink, so I got to obey and go take a shower. I got to obey, right? Because if I don't obey and take a shower, I'm going to stink all day long. It's been fun. It's been a great week. I've been able to obey my rules that I set for myself. So you do the same and you enjoy it. You have fun no matter what you're going through. Obey and trust the process.
拜。